Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session. Uh, we have Praveen. Uh, Praveen, uh, would you like to come up? Yeah. Yep, uh, we have Praveen today. Uh, uh, Praveen Raghuvanshi. So sorry if I butchered your name, but uh, so today we are going to have our cloud lunch and learn session on deep uh, neural networks, right? Uh, yeah. And then we are going to have uh, Azure Functions and Azure ML, how to make sure that you can use this AI basically and ML.net to uh, do some magic that uh, Praveen is going to actually show us today with his demos. Uh, so Praveen, do you want to speak about yourself? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Alka. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank the participants for uh, taking time out of their busy schedule and uh, joining the session today. Uh, I'd like to share my appreciation or thanks to Hugo also, who's like the originator of this uh, great meetup. I have talked in this meetup, I think, one and a half year back, and uh, it's a great opportunity or with great excitement. It's, I would like to come back to this stage. So with that, uh, uh, let me uh, brief me brief about me. Like uh, I'm Praveen Nguyensi, currently working as a cloud architect at uh, Harman International. It's a Samsung okay. company. And uh, yeah, so I'll brief you more about myself and uh, I'll roll over to my slides. All right, yeah, please uh, prepare your slides. And meanwhile, you know, I would like again, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, with your busy schedule and uh, i would like to say that cloud lunch and learn uh actually continues every week and we have these sessions weekly so uh, i'm going to share actually on the chat the next uh, cloud lunch and learn session so if you didn't register yet please uh, go ahead and visit that meanwhile i'm going to bring the screen uh that praveen is going to share and kick start the session all right Okay, let's do it. Okay. 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 Are we good with the slides? Okay. Okay. Uh, let me get started. So thanks everyone for joining the session today. Uh, it's a privilege to be talking at this uh, platform or Cloud Lunch and Learn, where we share the knowledge with the audience and uh, we also get to know about new, new things through the questions that the audience used to ask. So it's a great collaborative platform and uh, uh, I appreciate the efforts being put up by the team behind the scenes. It's really, uh, encouraging and appreciable. So with that, uh, let me start with the, today's topic. It's about serverless deep neural network with uh, Azure functions and ML.NET. So a brief, uh, just, yeah. uh, brief introduction about myself. I'm a cloud architect at Harmon. It's a Samsung company. And domain I work for is uh, professional audio, video, and control. Area of expertise is uh, cloud and distributed computing. And the things I'm very much interested in is uh, AIML and IoT. I'm based out of Bangalore, India, and a member of .NET Foundation. So just in case, if you want to leverage or you want to see the slide deck or the resources for this talk, uh, it's all available at this URL. So this URL will be present in every slide, just in case if you miss any of the letter or number in this one. So make sure that you make a note of it once I roll over through the slides. So the agenda for today's talk is uh, a serverless. Uh, uh, what is serverless? Then uh, what is as your function? Then deep neural network, image classification, I'll be touching a little bit on the ML.NET and followed by a demo which uh, uh, encircles through all these concepts. So uh, what is serverless? So before going to the serverless, I'd like to talk about the traditional way of developing the software, wherein uh, you had uh, multiple entities involved in a software, such as front-end logic, security, back-end logic, 
on a database. So all those things were curved into one uh, unit and they were uh, being deployed on a on-premise environment. And the challenge there was like, uh, you never know how much infrastructure is being required for you to serve your customers. So, so it can be, you may be doing the uh, estimation for the car or for the infrastructure, which may go beyond the capacity of the users or the users being served, or it may be under capacity as well. So it's really a waste of resources, cost, and money in terms of uh, the infrastructure that is required. Uh, to build a non-serverless or a trivial uh, systems that we need. So to overcome those limitations, we the serverless came into picture wherein you can just pay for the usage that you are going to do for your resources. For example, if you want to use a resource for like five days, you just provision, you could just use it for five days or, and it's the very much um, the good part of the serverless is like it's uh, based on pay as you go. That means uh, you are going to pay only for the usage and not for the uh, um, cons cons consumption of the full resources that is required. So you need not to buy the servers. You need not to buy uh, the networking switches or any kind of those things those kind of things that is required to build your application or deploy or host your application. So what, so it's more of a, uh, so the best part is like, you can just play around with those things. If you need more capacity, you can just scale it. So serverless generally auto scales on its own. So you need not to worry about the, provisioning of the resources here. You just say, what is the plan that I need? And based on the plan, things will be rolled out for you. So this is the benefit of having the serverless systems. Uh, your application is being deployed on a serverless ecosystem. Now coming to the uh, Azure functions, this is the serverless offering from uh, Microsoft, to, uh, which includes uh, basically a uh, your code, then there is an event or data and data. So events are on which the code will execute. So events are being triggered. And once the event is triggered based uh, on that uh, trigger, an action will be taken, which is nothing but your code execution. So together they are going to fulfill the requirements of your uh, APIs or your resources or the things that is required by your application to work on. So all this is being taken care of by Azure function. So it's a serverless offering. You need not to bother about the infrastructure or anything. You are mainly focused on the business part of it and not the infrastructure part of it. Coming to the Azure functions, uh, there are different kinds of uh, triggers. Uh, or the connectors that are available. And uh, the, this list keeps on growing as uh, the cloud, uh, as, the, as the Azure is uh, progressing. And I feel that uh, uh, most of the triggers are already available, but uh, if anything new comes up, they get added to the this list very soon. So just to give you an example, uh, if you want to send an SMS, there is a Tudio trigger uh, connector that is available. So, uh, when uh, any event happens based on that you want to send an SMS or a email, you know, send an SMS or some other notification, you can use the Tudio trigger. Or if you feel that any new file gets added to your Azure storage block, it get, triggers uh, your Azure functions and based on that, you can perform some operation. For example, if you upload a image on a block, in that case, you can write a Azure function that can listen to that blob storage. And once the file is uploaded, you can perform a operation on that image, such as you can compress that image or you can transform that image and give a, another set of output. So 
these are the different uh, category of uh, triggers that are available so one of the good one is uh, cosmos db the no sql offering from the azure that is also one of the good uh, uh, connectors that is available then for your messaging services you have service bus now coming to deep neural network so uh, when we go talk about the deep neural network uh, i want to explain uh, like uh, where does it fit in within the ecosystem of artificial intelligence and machine learning so if you look at this diagram uh, you see that artificial intelligence is a superset of everything which is like uh, achieving the human intelligence so it's more about uh, uh, how the humans work and achieving that scale of intelligence is can be categorized under the artificial intelligence whereas machine learning is more of learning from the data so if you provide some data to it the machine the algorithm will look the patterns in it and they start learning and start predicting out of that one so it's more of a based on the statistical data that is present uh, in the data itself then under that you have neural networks so neural networks are nothing but like you have a set of neurons available and similar to what we have in the brain and based on those uh, neurons uh, there is some activation that happens the energy gets transmitted across uh, the neurons and based on that you start taking some more decisions out of that one so that is part of a neural network so you, a problem can be s solved by using a rule based system or a neural network wherein the neural network uh, allows you to learn the things step by the step and last not but not the least is the deep learning so deep learning and the difference between neural network and the deep neural learning is artificial neural networks are mainly comprised of uh, single uh, layer whereas a deep learning in comprise of multiple layers and the why do we need multiple layers is reason is because uh, a problem can be solved using multitude of neurons but the uh, but the computation that is required for uh, solving that problem using a single layer is huge you can't solve it along with one of the with one layer so in order to break down that problem into multiple small small steps we leverage the concept of deep learning which includes uh, multiple hidden layers within the network so a layer multiple hidden layers means it can have uh, any number of layers within a network within a neural network so deep neural network uh, again i'll talk a little bit more on this one so this is a difference between a uh, machine learning a primitive machine learning and a deep learning so the di basic difference is like in a machine learning you provide the input and this is something called as a feature at extraction so wherein we extract the features uh, from the data itself and uh, we pass into the algorithms where the learning happens and once the learning is done we make a prediction of the out as an output of that one so this whole part of feature act extraction is manual so in this case in the feature extraction is done mainly by the data scientists who have knowledge on that data and who knows that uh, domain very well so they are the brain behind extracting the features from the data whereas in deep learning this thing is automatically done by the uh, neurons itself so, so uh, like it is having a multiple layers within itself so feature extraction and learning both take place together within a neural network in a deep neural network so here there is no manual intervention you don't need a data science expert here you don't need a human expert here to get extract the features out of a problem statement or the uh, data itself all it is done by the neurons that is present within the layer 
So just to give you an example of our image classification. So if you look at this picture, you see the there is a car present here, and this is a convolution neural network. So convolution neural network is one form of a deep neural network itself, but uh, it allows you to perform the uh, things in a very optimized way in less num with less number of parameters compared to a fully connected layer uh, neural network. So what happens is uh, you specify the image, the image, uh, the neural network learns the uh, learns the features out of that image and it starts to make a prediction in the end. For example, you see here there's a headlight is there, the two headlights and the tires and the shape of the car. So these are the different features which it will identify and based on that, it will make a prediction uh, at the end of the uh, neural network. So if you see here, like uh, it's saying that 95% is a car, 3% is a truck, <clears throat> whereas 2% is a bicycle. So there is a threshold that we have to set and based on that threshold, or you can take the maximum out of these values to say, okay, what is uh, present in the image? So here if you see 95% it is saying it's a car. That means it's a car. So basically how, this is how the learning takes place in a deep neural network. So imagine these are different uh, layers that is present in the deep neural network. So for example, the initial layer, the, the, the very first layers, so what they will do it uh, just identify the edges and gradients within the image. It doesn't know anything about the object present in that image, whether it is a face, it is a car, elephant or a chair. It doesn't know anything about those things. So initial layer, the learning happens it's just for finding the edges and the gradients within the image. Once we move further down the layers, it tries to club those features which it has identified in the previous layers and further learning happens and club those things and try to get the output of uh, a new feature out of that one. For example, it starts to build a different uh, images of the uh, features that is present. For example, you have nose, eyes, ears, those kind of things will start appearing here, here, the tire of the car. They will start to form the different, different objects present in the image now or the parts of the object within that image. And here for the, similarly for the elephant and this is for the chair. Now coming to the, uh, near to the last layers, it tries to again club these things and form a different uh, patterns in that one. So now you could see started uh, joining, uh, combining all these things and started getting a, some uh, relevant output here. So you can see here it started forming a face with eyes, nose and lips uh, being positioned, positioned in a very particular way that depicts the face of a human being. Whereas the same thing happens for the car, elephant, and chairs. So in that, these are like near to the last layer where we are about to classify what is present in the image. And this gives us confidence uh, to the system, okay, whether it is a face or a car or an elephant or a chair. Now this whole process is uh, uh, very uh, compute intensive and it requires a lot of data as well. When I say data, it requires a lot of images of uh, varying nature, where, such as in different conditions like uh, a different uh, lighting conditions, different weather conditions. So there are many aspects to that one if you want to uh, your uh, algorithm or the machine learning algorithm to learn those patterns or identify those things, it needs to have a varying set of data, which includes uh, most of the scenarios that is present for that one. So suppose I want to consider it for a car. So in that case, the car images has to be present uh, 
for different models or for different lighting conditions, those kind of things. So, but training all those things, a huge data set or humongous data set and running on a compute intensive uh, uh, system, it's very expensive as well as time consuming. So what we tend to do is we try to leverage the transfer learning here rather than like training the things from scratch, wherein you feed the full data set and you train it for like days, months like that and get the model out of that one. Instead of that one, what we I'll be doing today is we, I'll be leveraging the transfer learning concept, wherein we will just use the existing trained uh, model and that we, that is being trained on a certain classes, and we will use those that model to make a prediction on my images. Not the uh, I'm not going to train it. I'm just going to make a prediction for that one. So uh, I, for that, I'll be using mobile net V2. The reason for using mobile net V2 is it's a very lightweight uh, uh, model of around like 14 MB compared to other models such as ResNet 18 or VGG 16. So those are very heavy models, which we can't deploy it on Azure functions because of the limitation that it provides uh, in a consumption model that uh, you can't use a heavy model there. So we have to use the uh, model which is lightweight. So for this, I'll be using the transfer learning. Now coming to uh, the algorithm part, uh, what machine learning framework I'm going to use? Uh, I'm going to use the ML.NET uh, machine learning framework, which is from Microsoft uh, and it's being targeted for .NET developers. So the benefits, uh, these are some of the benefits of it. Like you uh, can build your own custom models, uh, which is not possible uh, maybe in uh, Azure ML or uh, some other places, but here it's very much possible. Uh, you can create your own models out of that. Then it's very much developer focused. You can run it on your machine, on a development machine. You can uh, use it as a normal framework, like you use uh, other framework uh, such as PyTorch, Keras, or Scikit-learn. It's extensible in the sense that uh, you can export and import uh, it into a format called as Onyx, uh, <clears throat> which is an interoperable uh, standard between different uh, machine learning frameworks. That so you, it can consume Onyx model file or it can be exported, to, it can be converted into an Onyx model file as well. It has been very much proven. That means it has been used in multiple applications within the Microsoft. It has a history of around like 15 to 20 years where it got started, but it got recently open sourced, I think <clears throat> two years back only. So it's being used within the uh, Microsoft applications such as Bing, PowerPoint to make the predictions or to suggest few things in that one. And the good part is like it's open source and cross platform. So it works on all the platforms uh, being Windows, uh, Linux or Mac. Now for the today's uh, uh, demo, uh, this is the cloud architecture wherein uh, <clears throat> I'll be acting as a user, which is nothing but like a Postman client. And uh, through that, I'll be uploading an image to my Azure function. So this is your Azure function, the classify image function that is there. Then uh, we'll load the model. So this model I have already stored in my Azure blob uh, container. So we will load that model. It returns the model file. So this is your .onyx file that gets written. Once it is written, we'll feed it into a ML.NET framework to make the prediction uh, what is present in the image. So it makes a prediction and gives you uh, the label or the class, like what kind of object is present. And we give it back to the client, which is nothing but a postman here. So this is like a customer success stories from ML.NET. So it's being uh, widely used with some of the 
big customers so such as asgard can cam sign parser engine real estate power bi so this is uh, most of them are other than the one which is being leveraged from by microsoft with that i'll move on to the demo Okay. So uh, before I start the Azure functions, uh, I'll show you where I have stored my uh, mobile net Onyx file. So it's already stored in the serverless DNN container within my Azure. So it's uh, a local one. But I have the same thing available in my uh, my Azure portal as well. I can so I'll show you there as well. But for running it locally, it's uh, already stored here and it's around like 13.6 MB. So this is being utilized for making the prediction. This file and the content of this file can be seen using a utility called as a Natron. This is the utility. It tells you what are the different layers present in it. Like this is a convolution layer. Then we are doing batch normalization. This is your activation function, ReLU. And this will tell you the structure of uh, architecture of that uh, model. So I'm not going to go deeper into this one now. You can see it is saying that uh, this is uh, accepting uh, a 224 by 224 image of three channels each. That means red, uh, green, blue, a colored image of 224 by 224 pixels. This is the size of the image it expects. And another uh, significant thing is uh, the output. So it is uh, uh, classifying out of 1,000 classes uh, that are present for this uh, mobile net thing. So it's based on the image not image net problem statement, which is uh, being solved for thousand classes. So which uh, the thousand classes are like these uh, that are present. You have ostrich, the kind of animals. A lot, lot of things are present in this, and it's a list of like thousand classes that is present. So it's a good model to cover up for most of the use cases. If you have a specific problem, then you need to reduce the number of classes based on that one. So I haven't done that one in this tutorial. Now coming to <coughs> the code. So this is my Visual Studio and okay. So you can see the, I just have one Azure function present here. So I'll be running it locally first. And uh, the first thing is uh, the image setting. So here I have specified the size of the image. The height and width is 224 by 224 pixels. Then the input source uh, to my model so which is of type bitmap so i'll be transforming the uploaded image into a bitmap which will be con i'll be uh, uh i'll be me i'll be making a prediction on so here also i need to specify the height and width of that image then the output is where i store the score score means uh, so as i just shown you that 95%, 3%, and 2%. So those that kind of a score array will it will be holding inside this, and I'll be taking a max out of that one to make a uh, conclusion on that one. And this is a important thing here. Like this uh, is the column name, so output column name, and this value you will get from the Netron. If you see here, if I have selected the input name is data whereas output name is this one 
so this has to match with the input and output if they are not matching uh, the prediction will not happen or the model will not be utilized so these are the two three basic things that is required now coming to the classify image so before that i can show you the settings So these are the different uh, settings that I have, uh, I'll be using. So like web job storage, uh, this is, just, so for local running, I'm using the storage emulator, Azure storage emulator. I have already started it. Uh, it's already running like this. And that's why we were able to access this uh, in the emulator part of it. Then the runtime is .NET. This is the container name and the model file name. So these are the basic settings that are required to work uh, with this Azure function. And same is being present in my Azure uh, portal as well, or the function deployed in Azure. Now coming to the code part of it. Okay. So this is uh, the starting point of my uh, Azure function. I uh, have declared a function by the name classify image and it's a post call wherein we will uh, be posting a image file, a PNG file, kind of a PNG file. So first thing that we are doing is uh, we are just reading the values from the local.settings.json or the environment file which is present. So this is your container name. If it is not present, I'll just um, use that. Uh, hard-coded values otherwise it will use it like this so container name connection string model name these are three important things so this is the code for reading those things now after that we just load the model okay so upload model to, okay so i just uh, so knew that uh, we have already uploaded the mobile net file in the azure block so this step is for that only, just to make sure that uh, we have completed this one. Now, loading a model from uh, our storage. So the current limitation with the uh, ML.NET framework is we can't stream a file to it. We have to pass the path of the file from where the file can be loaded. So if we a user uploads a file and we get it as a stream within the request, we can't pass it directly to the ML.NET framework. So what we need to do, uh, I just uh, saved it to a temporary path. So here inside this, I'm just creating a temporary directory and getting the temp path and seeing if the file exists or not. If not, then directory is created. So this is uh, getting the temp directory for that model path. And once that is done, then we are reading the file from the blog and saving it to the temp path. So this will read the file from the Azure blog. So here we are creating the blob container client. We are seeing if it is if it exists or not, then getting the blob blob with the model name. Model name is nothing but your model file name. This is the one. So it is uh, creating a stream out of that one, then downloading into a stream. So it so now we got the stream. So once we got the stream as a, from the blog, we are going to just save it by the same file name, like uh, the name that we have chosen for the file name. So it this method just uh, saves that file. It uh, saves the model path then it saves copy to file stream and it just saves it. So once this is done, uh, the model will be saved to some temporary location. So this part is done loading of model. So we, we have the model file is being uploaded, uh, saved into a temporary path. Now comes the ML.NET. So as I shown you that uh, this is the input column name, this is the output column. And these values should match the value that is present in your uh, Netron file. So you have to get it from there. And this is the very first thing that is required for working with ML.NET. You need to create an ML context 
it's very much similar to your db context uh, and uh, it will act as a, a context to run any operation within the ml.net so we are just creating that one then uh, we are creating an empty data of uh, input because we are not going to train anything we are just going to tell what is that structure of the input so our in our case it is just an image file that we have uh, specified in the model input class and this is how we load the data so currently for training we for inferencing we don't need to do any of these things now this is the important part of the the crux of this whole thing so here what we are doing uh, we are performing some transformation on the image that we got so whatever the image we so till now execution has not happened we are just defining the structure it's kind of a blueprint that we are specifying uh, that uh, these things will be done on any image that is provided by the user but we haven't done those things as of now we are just defining the blueprint the first one is resizing the image so if my image is not of the size 224 by 224 it has to be resized because that is the size that uh, mobile net understand so we are just giving that one and we are giving the size also like image weight image height like that second thing is uh, extracting the pixels out of that image so each image is made up of like this image is made up of 224 by 224 pixels and each pixel has a value of uh, from 1 to 255 where there's uh, one leads to a dark color uh, and 2 to 55 represents a white kind of a color so uh, we try to extract the pixels out of that one pixel values and this is apply onyx it is for loading the model so whatever the model file that we have saved in the temporary path so this is where we specify that path and it will load that uh, onyx file into the ml context and uh, which will be utilized by the ml context pipeline so these are the basic three operations uh, like resizing extracting the pixels and applying the on onyx model means loading the saved onyx file so once this is done we move on to the training training is nothing but like uh, fitting the data so here we don't have the data as of now we are just defining the blueprint here now this is the important part here we are creating the input input is what whatever the uh, file that we got of, through our request from the postman or through the client we will create a bitmap out of that one and we will create a input of that one now this input is being fed to uh, something called as a prediction engine so in ml context you have something called as a prediction engine which allows you to make the prediction on the input it you need to define what is the input type and what is the output type of that one so in prediction engine you specify the models which is nothing but your blueprint for the model or the structure so it holds a structure this whole structure is present inside that one so once this is done the prediction is done the predict method is the one which takes the input data and it makes a prediction out of that one. So, predicts, so we get a prediction so already we defined in model output that there is a score property which is an array so we are going to take the maximum value out of that one so once they have the maximum score based on that we define okay what is the class uh, it belongs to so i have already defined a map between the index and the id and the label so for example this is the value that i got uh, from the github and i have created uh, just stored it in the into a string and this one just deserializes and gives me the class id based on the class id it will give me uh, what it is for example if it is zero then it will give me this value if it is one it will give me gold face if it is two it will give me great white shark <clears throat> so this is how it uh, is going to give me the label out of the maximum score now with that i think that that's the full source code that is there now i'll just run it Okay. 
and this is really very easy in using ml.net compared to if you have to use SG or ML wherein you need to have a subscription and uh, you want to experiment with ML dot machine learning things here you don't need any kind of those things you just and you, you are free to use uh, uh, C sharp or F sharp whereas in SG or ML you are bound to use uh, uh, Python. Okay, look like uh, my uh, function is running. Let me try to hit a request. So this is the request uh, 7071. Let me try. Okay, so API is less classified image. Executing classified image this is the starting point, loading the model. A model being saved to some temporary location. Executed. And you can see predicted uh, class ID is 212 and label is in this setter. So we'll see the same thing inside here. So if I go for 212 in this setter, in this one type of a talk only. So it has predicted quite well. I'll try to use one more image. Let's see. How it predicts on that. It's a cat. Again, the model is saved to yeah. So it's two one. Hungarian pointer. So this looks like a dog only. has predicted it as a dog which is a wrong one so yeah the model is not very much uh, accurate the reason being it's a very lightweight model and it's not uh, being recommended for uh, heavy applications but uh, with this uh, at least you can uh, perform some of the things in this so with that uh, so this this is uh, done using the local one now if you want to deploy it to azure function you just need to go and right click and deploy no need to make any change in the code or anywhere you just go and publish it to azure so i have already published it on azure so what you have to do is you just need to publish that's all so you have to specify your connection strings and other things but i can show you how so this is my uh, blob storage. So I have a serverless DNN, and this is the file that is present on serverless. And this is my Azure function, uh, classify image, the same one. And if I hit this one, uh, 
I do have an API for running. Yeah, so this is my endpoint for uh, which is hosted on Azure, the Azure function. And if I specify the same dog here. <clears throat> I hit it. Yeah, so it's giving the same prediction here as well. So as you can see, there is no code change or anything required. You just um, play around with the things locally and just hit the deploy or the publish from the code from the Visual Studio, and you're good to go. So nothing has to be changed. Already, I have. Uh, made the changes with respect to the configuration. So whatever I have defined there, I have defined the same thing here as well. So that while uh, we hit this API, it will take the uh, configuration from the Azure function hosted on Azure. Okay. I think that's all for the demo part. Now coming to the resources. So uh, <clears throat> this is a page uh, where you can find all the resources with respect to this session. Uh, I already have uh, my slide, slide deck here. Then you can see the source code as well. The one that is the one that I'm running in the Visual Studio. There is everything is present here. Plus the links are there, source code, tag. And this is a tutorial that I wrote uh, for this thing. And, uh, it's a very exhaustive uh, tutorial which explains each and everything in a very detailed manner. So start right from starting what is serverless, what is Azure function, deep neural network, then ML.NET, then the cloud architecture, then how to deploy it on local, and with all the steps, how to create uh, the Azure function. So I have highlighted each and everything, what kind of trigger you have to use, what kind of code you have to do, what kind of API you have to hit. So each and everything is present here. Uh, this is for local. Similarly, I did wrote, like, this is for the uh, Netron, the model thing. So here I have specified that these two things are of uh, high importance. Then once it is done, see prediction it is making for the dog, input image, then how to deploy onto the Azure function. Then there are some errors that you may face. So I have provided a workaround for that as well. Like for that, so you need to have a 64-bit set, otherwise it will not work. Uh, yeah, so each and everything is present in this. And one last thing I want to comment is uh, uh, I'm running a, a Telegram channel. Okay, so it's available in this web page as well, plus uh, on my tutorial as well. And it's related to ML.NET only. So feel free to join that one just in case if you're interested in ml.net things okay with that uh, yeah so this is a link for my github page uh, which has all the resources a short link and this is a bigger one uh, and, and these are some references and with that uh, this is how you can reach out to me these are different places to reach out to me with that yeah thank you Great, thank you, Questions. Praveen. Uh, thank you for providing this session. Um, so, can you again slide back to the URL that you had? So, don't remove it, please. Yes, yes. I'll post it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, tiny URL. Well. So, just yeah, copy it and post it in the chat, please. Uh, sure, so sure. people can go and visit that, and hopefully, put their you know responses and feedback there. Okay. All right. Um, Yep. So uh, if you can expand this slide where you have your contact information. Uh, 
Yep, Shit. this one. Can you make it big? Kind of. Yep. All right. So basically, as you see here, guys, uh, uh, Praveen is actually sharing his connections, like social links and stuff like that. Uh, so go ahead and click on them. And if you have any questions on this session, you can ask him. Again, thank you, Praveen, for doing these sessions. I checked the chat. I don't see uh, questions there. So I think you are good. Oh, thank you very much. All and right. uh, it was great talking on this platform. Hope to see you give some more talks in the future. Sure. Thank you for uh, presenting. Have a good, you. Uh, you know, uh, have a good rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you are watching silently there without any comments or you are going to watch it after this one because you are doing something else at the moment, uh, again, you know what to do. Just um, visit the page. There's also Cloud Launch and Learn uh, YouTube, YouTube page where you can watch this on YouTube. And let us know, uh, you know, your take from it. All right. Okay. That's all, guys. Uh, have a great evening and thank you for tuning in. Bye for now. And thank you, Praveen, for being here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye.